So give us your perspective. You have sort of a unique perspective because you have a substantial U.S. operation. You have a lot of prominent U.S. clients. At the same time, you're a bank originally based in Paris. That's where you're based. So what is your perception on the economy in the United States and for that matter globally? We have a very resilient economy in the United States uh, driven by uh, steel, uh, strong uh, consumption, the consumer spends, uh, driven by a tight labor market, driven by uh, the velocity of capital in this country is just uh, amazing and strong capital markets which really leads to making the uh, uh, US economy a very attractive place domestically and overseas. For years now we have been, I'll say, dependent on the central bank, both the United States and to some extent as well in Europe. Are we coming to a world where the economy can sort of survive on its own without worrying day to day about what the Fed is going to do or what we think it's going to do? Well, I think we, 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 we are very vigilant about what the central banks do, right? And they have a very noble objective. It's first and foremost to protect uh, employment and to uh, ensure price stability. Price stability is a bedrock of any sustainable economy. And this is what the Fed and the ECB have been doing in quite a similar way, actually, uh, in terms of uh, uh, hiking rates uh, in terms of for the Fed specifically implementing QT. Very likely both institutions uh, have set rates probably at their terminal level. Mm. Um, the House view is in spite of the resilience of this economy likely a mild recession in the United States slowing down in Europe. We, know it, we don't expect any rate cuts probably until mid 2024. So how does that affect the clients that you deal with day in and day out? Are their appetite for loans, their hesitancy about getting loans, particularly if we're looking at possibly a mild turn down and higher interest rates. So there's a real cost of capital now. It is, and there is, however, clients who have had uh, systematic access to capital markets have managed to term out uh, a significant part of the, their indentures, which, which explain why the impact of the arkish policies of the central banks have not yet fully impacted uh, corporate America. And uh, part, of, part of them are expecting actually to access capital markets at a later time when uh, rates, uh, we hope, they hope normalize. And that's one aspect. But it's similar as well for consumers. You know, uh, people who have contracted mortgages years ago still benefit fixed rate for from a low rate uh, uh, in terms of cost of funding and have not been yet really impacted at this time, which explains probably why the consumer continues to be quite active. You've said, Jean-Yves, that it is a strong economy, particularly in the United States right now. Uh, what about growth? Where does it go from here? Because that must affect the demand that your clients have for borrowing, for example, uh, to invest in growth. Do they, are they optimistic about what comes next so that it makes sense for them to invest for the future? Clients are optimistic in spite of the headwinds and specifically geopolitics and politics. They invest, they expand. Uh, interestingly, uh, what we see from our U.S. clients is really around three dimensions. They still need lending. Uh, to finance capex programs or acquisition finance or expansions. They need short-term funding. Uh, working capital needs have become a C-suite discussions because this is the lifeblood of these companies. And it's across trade, it's across cash management. We lead in trade worldwide, we lead in cash management in Europe, supporting US company there. And supply chain remains a topic of uh, focus, uh, specifically uh, for clients who are reallocating or clients who need liquidity to be injected to make the process smoother. Candidly, we, we've been very active assisting clients to shift from the not possible anymore, just in time, to what we call the just in case. But mm -hmm. David, I would be remiss if I were not highlighting the fact that we've had and we have today unprecedented demand from clients as it relates to hedging strategies. Mm. And it's across the spectrum. It's rates, Arkish policy, it's commodities, the status of energy, it's currencies, we've seen more volatility in currencies, and obviously it's, a, it's equities. As I say, you have a unique perspective uh, with sort of a foot in both worlds, the United States as well as a foot still in Europe. How would you compare and contrast the attitudes and the appetites 
of your U.S. clients from what your brothers and sisters are seeing over in Europe? Uh, very interestingly, we see U.S. clients, the most international ones, showing strong interest in terms of expanding, investing, or raising capital in Europe. The strong dollar is a factor, but not only. Uh, an example, David, uh, a very large, you will recognize this company, global leader in the semiconductor. You know, having already implemented a large repatriation, uh, supply chain repatriation program in the U.S., and at the same time is expanding and building and expanding uh, production capacity in Europe. The bank is uniquely positioned to support and lead and underwrite both programs. Um, we, but, but, but conversely, um, a very significant number of European clients show massive interest to invest in the United States. The resilience of the economy, the you know, uh, still high rates providing good you know, return on capital. And what, what I see from the position I have between the two continents is um, a very significant continuing and continuous inflow of capital from outside of the United States into this country, meaning either the money gets invested, and by the way, government programs like IRA, CHIPS Act, Infrastructure Act has, have created a very significant inflow of transactions. Uh, and the money that stays on the sideline, uh, there is a, a very important dry powder that is being built uh, that will be used uh, effectively when things normalized.